Hello and welcome back to Artisan Electrics, the ultimate YouTube channel for electricians and today we are in London once again. It's a little bit rainy and muggy today and it's taken me two and a half hours to get here. The M25 was like a car park once again. But I finally made it and I'm doing a commercial EV charging installation today. So this is the wall where we're installing two three-phase zappy chargers today. So um, it's gonna be a nice little installation. I'll show you around and show you what we're doing. As always, don't forget to hit a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I know that 71.1% of you watch my videos and you're not subscribed and that's not acceptable. So hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Let's get into it. So in terms of the chargers, we've got two zappies going on the wall here side by side, three-phase, 22 kilowatt untethered and in terms of cable route it couldn't be easier really so we're going through here and the mains room is here <laughs> so pretty nice so we've got a Hager three-phase distribution board here and as you can see we've got spare ways we've actually got um, f three three-phase ways completely spare so we're going to be installing two new three-phase 32 amp circuits in this distribution board running five core six mil armored cable straight down clip it along and then just run along inside this cupboard and that is the outside wall basically so what i'm going to try to do is just drill through and come out straight in the back of the chargers one probably will just go straight through the wall like that and then the other one will have to go at a slight angle probably i have to drill from the outside in for that one and the idea would be then we can just take the cable straight into the back of the chargers so that we don't need to see any cabling on the outside we've also got the CTs to think about so we've got three CTs which come with each of these Zappi chargers and basically that enables us to put a CT on each of the three phases and measure how much power the installation is using and we can put a grid limit on so that if the factory here is running at high capacity and they're at, at risk of blowing these 100 amp main fuses then it will ramp the chargers down so that the chargers themselves don't risk blowing the main fuses so that's a great feature of the zappy that we use a lot really and um, we've got main bonding here there's a 16 mil main bond to the gas now that is a big big gas incomer not the nicest main bond on there really it's a little bit loose so i'll probably tighten that up um, maybe even put a new clamp on that just to make it a bit safer but yeah bit of a hefty gas supply that they've got here um, the water supply i need to have a little search for that because i'm not quite sure where it is a little bit unusual here that they've used a sort of single pole henley block as an earthing terminal not really seen that before maybe they just ran out of space in this main earthing terminal and they didn't have a spare one um, it is a pme system as you can see from this label here if i take you in close this installation is connected to a protective multiple earthed system so that's pme or what we call tncs basically it means that the neutral and earth for the installation the supply are combined at some point so we have a pen conductor now because of this we have very strict regulations about not exporting the pme earth we wouldn't want to create a situation where there could be a problem with a pen fault where the main supplier's earth drops out and and then basically you could end up with a high voltage on the casing of the vehicle so what we've got with the zappies is we've got pen fault detection device built into these so we can connect them directly to the pme earth with no problem whatsoever they've also got type a rcd protection equivalent built into them with the six milliamp dc protection so we don't need to provide rcd protection in the board the cable's going to be armored cable clip direct so that cable supplying the chargers doesn't need rcd protection so we can literally just put it on a 32 amp type b mcb in the board which is what the manufacturer recommends uh, we've got a db schedule here so that's quite nice so we can take a look at that and 
to do our maximum demand calculations. But uh, because we've got the grid limiting function anyway, it, it doesn't matter because it's basically impossible for us to blow the main fuse uh, with the charger, which is one of the great reasons why I install Zappies because they just are such a lifesaver for us as electricians. So what I'm gonna do first is just get the chargers mounted on the wall on the other side. It's spitting a little bit, but it's not too bad at the moment. So I wanna get that outside work done as much as possible. Get these holes drilled through and the armored cables run in. And then once that's done, I can start figuring out uh, the rest of the stuff inside here. Right, so I'm just doing a bit of measuring up and unfortunately the DB, that little bit of the cupboard there is basically here. And in my mind, it's just a bit too close to this gangway because you're gonna end up getting tr cables trailing straight in front of where people are gonna walk. So what I wanna do is shift the chargers over to here. And I've decided to put one here and one here so that you've got plenty of space for the cables. And I think it will just look neater there anyway because it's sort of in the middle of this section of wall. Uh, but that means that I'm probably going to have to drill through and run the cables horizontally on the other side for a little bit and then go into that cupboard. So it makes the cable run a little bit longer. Also a bit of a dilemma here because we've got the cable, we can take the cables back entry into the zappies, but then how do you gland the armoured cable in the back? Because you can't really chop out a big chunk of wall to be able to connect the armoured gland in the back and I'd like to kind of drill at an angle anyway so that the cables clip smoothly along the wall. So I could either put a compression gland in the back of the zappy and just not, not gland this end of the armor properly, just gland it at the other end. Or I could bring the cables out underneath, run them up into the bottom, and then I can actually put a proper armored gland on. But then obviously you're gonna see a bit of cable below the charger. But that's not the end of the world really, so I think I'll probably do it that way. And then for the CT cable, for one of them, I might run it into the back of the zappy so that I can run it separate for, from the main armor to cable. Right, so a little update for you. Uh, cables are coming through the wall here. I wasn't able to go out the back, so I've just decided to come low level. And these armored then are just gonna clip along here, basically. Um, so I'm just gonna cleat those along the wall into that cupboard. Same with this flexi conduit. That's just gonna be clipped along neatly on the wall there. And then in here, Basically the cables will come through down here and then run around 
along here and up into the distribution board. Uh, so I'm going to get everything kind of clipped as far as I can, ready, and then prep myself so that I've got minimal downtime with the distribution board because obviously I'm going to have to safely isolate this to work on it so that the board's dead when I'm working on it, but it runs like all the offices upstairs and stuff. It's 10 to 12 now, so what I might do is actually have my lunch now and then I can do the shutdown while they're all having their lunch so that it minimizes inconvenience for them. Um, the CT cables, the CTs are all here. So I've labeled them up CT1, 2 and 3. So they're all ready to attach basically onto these little loops. These little loops are perfect actually for me to attach the CTs onto. And basically these CTs just come along in this flexi conduit, which I'm just going to clip along in the cupboard bring it up to about here and then the CT cables can just be neatly cable tied up. And those three CTs are all connected to the one zappy which will be the master zappy and then the other zappy which will just be the slave and essentially what will happen is that zappy will read all the readings, send it in the cloud to the hub and then the hub will regulate the both zappies to ramp them both down if needed if the system is pulling too much power. So here are the zappies themselves and I've managed to kind of make them pretty symmetrical so I'm quite pleased with that, how that's turned out. I wanted them to look really symmetrical, you know, uh, but obviously the neatest way to do these cables coming out was to come out at a slight angle so that we could get a nice smooth bend on the cables without bending them too sharply because obviously that's not good for the cables. So. Although I would have preferred if we could have gone in the back of the zappies, that just wasn't really possible. I think this is a pretty neat solution really. And um, all I've got to do now is connect everything up the other side. Then I'll take the covers off briefly to run some tests on these just to make sure everything's safe, electrically speaking. Put the covers back on properly and um, get everything up and running. Right, so I've got these cables clipped now along through the cupboard here, ready. So all I've got to do now is run up into the DB. So I need to basically start prepping for the shutdown now. So I'm gonna give the client a heads up, give them 15, 20 minutes notice, have my lunch while I'm waiting for them to get ready. And then I'll just terminate those into the board and start livening things up. So that is it, two zappies up and running, all tested and ready to go. Everything's gone in really nicely. So just got a little bit of clearing up to do and get the customer set up on the app. And then I'm heading back on the car park that is the M25, trying to get home before the traffic starts. So as always, if you've enjoyed my videos, don't forget to hit a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future videos. If you hit the notification bell, then you'll be reminded when I post my next video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.